Assalamu alaikum. How do you get fit while working a nine to five? If you're watching this right now, you're Muslim, you work a nine to five, maybe you have a family, you feel like it's hard to find the time to work out and get fit and healthy. In this video, inshallah, I'm gonna be showing you guys a lot of amazing stuff in depth from how to time manage your day to how to meal prep to how to work out in a time efficient way to how to get yourself motivated. Literally every single component that makes it literally impossible for you to fail. So my caution to you if you watch this video is that after watching this video, you will have zero excuses not to get fit anymore, which means that you literally cannot procrastinate after this video because it's literally just like completely on you. And before I dive into it, like seriously, I put a lot of work in this video. I'm very excited for it. I actually wanted to do this video last week, but I was sick. And as you can hear, I'm still just getting over it. But again, this video is crazy, crazy in depth. And I'm really, really excited and try to share it with you. But like, just remember, Allah gave you free will so you can make the right decisions and you're accountable to your choices on the day of judgment. So let's say that you sinned or you missed your prayers. You can't just say on the day of judgment, oh, that was my father. Sorry. No, you got to make decisions. You got to make decisions correctly. So the decisions I want you to make after you watch this video are take action on it because I am literally giving you thousands and thousands of dollars of material that most other coaches would literally make you pay thousands of dollars for for free in this video so you can apply it and actually get results. So inshallah, Without further ado, let's actually dive in. I'm super pumped. Let me get my uh, my screen share going and I'm gonna show you this amazing presentation, inshallah. So, <clears throat> how to get fit while working a nine to five. So most Muslims struggle to get fit because maybe you've got work, of course we got salat, you got family, etc. And so if you work a nine to five, you probably end up, you know, uh, struggling with time management, right? Especially if you end up working overtime sometimes. So whether you work in a corporate setting or in a startup where you're probably more likely to be working late hours, whether you have kids or not, this video is for you and it's gonna help you massively, inshallah, to ultimately get the best results possible when it comes to fitness and time managing it with your nine to five, inshallah. So just like how we have the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman that build a foundation for us to be the best Muslims we can be, to help us to be pious and to help us to do the right thing in the eyes of Allah, there are also pillars in fitness that will help you to become a fit Muslim, okay? So there are four pillars. The first pillar is time management and lifestyle. The second is nutrition. The third is training. And the fourth is mindset. And let's actually dive into each of those points. So time management and lifestyle. If you're a victim to your schedule, you're never gonna succeed and you're never gonna stay consistent. But if you're a master of your schedule, even if you work 80 hours a week, you will still find the time to hit all your priorities. And I'm telling you right now, I know it's hard, but there are Muslim brothers, Muslim sisters who work 80 hours a week and have kids who are consistent, who are fit, who crush it, who are the most successful members of society and of this ummah. And my goal for you is if you're watching this right now, I want you to be one of them, inshallah, with the knowledge that I'm sharing with you here and in the other videos. Now, pillar two is nutrition, okay? So if your nutrition tastes good, it's sustainable, it's easy to prep, and it gives you some flexibility so you can stay consistent without having to be super rigid and you can still go to like family functions and all that stuff and weddings and whatnot. You know, your nutrition boosts your energy and your metabolism so you can lose fat and you intrinsically enjoy it because you have better energy levels, you're gonna succeed. But if it tastes bad, it's not sustainable and it makes you feel tired and it doesn't work or get you results, then obviously you're not gonna be consistent. So that's super, super, super important, okay? Now, pillar number three is training slash exercise. So if your workout plan is time efficient, it fits your schedule and it boosts your energy, your mood, your self-esteem, makes you feel good about yourself, in momentum, proud of yourself, and optimizes your natural hormones, reduces your stress, and builds muscle and burns fat, then you're gonna win. But if it doesn't accomplish all of the above, AKA the opposite. So let's say it doesn't work with your schedule. It takes forever. It takes hours and hours and hours, makes you feel tired, you know, kills your mood, makes you feel not good about yourself and like kills your momentum for the day and makes you even more stressed out. Then obviously that's an issue. So it's important you have the right strategy as far as how you fit it into your day and what you actually do within your workout to ensure that you're getting the positives and not the negatives that a lot of people end up having if they do some of these long, you know, workout plans that don't really fit time efficiency or scientifically optim being, being scientifically optimal, AKA scientific optimization. Okay. The fourth pillar is mindset. So there are a couple different levels to mindset, which we're going to cover all these today thoroughly, inshallah. The first one is internal accountability. So your standards, your mindset, your identity, and then we got external accountability and mindset, which is support and accountability, consulting and troubleshooting, right? So like I always say, uh, you know, what is troubleshooting and consulting? Well, if you have a lot of time, but you don't have a lot of money, you can't really afford to hire a coach. So you have to go through like my free videos. You have to go research stuff online. You have to troubleshoot, you have to experiment stuff. But if you don't have a whole lot of time to, you know, spend on that, but you have money because you're spending all that time working. So you're making money, then just hire a coach, hire consultants, hire uh, so that you can get, you know, the results a lot faster, inshallah. So anyways, let's go into time management and lifestyle. Okay. 
Uh, so your prayers and your work schedule give you structure, but there are some unstructured variables that pop up inside of your life that may not be as structured at the moment. So family, personal life, sleep schedule, all that stuff. Again, these are things we need to start taking proactive discipline structure of in order to get the best results. So depending on the person, you know, 90% of people do best working out in the morning right after fudger, which means you need to get to bed on time instead of watching TV, YouTube, social media, staying up late, wasting time. Okay. So it's time to grow up. You're an adult now. So you can't just be like on your computer or phone until 2 a.m. Like, you know, a kid, right? You have to be an adult and get to bed on time and be disciplined with your routines. Now, if you have a newborn, obviously you're not going to get ideal sleep regardless. Even if you go to bed on time, you're still going to woke up in the middle of the night. But overall, you know, barring of course the exceptions and circumstances that may make this impossible for you. And I'm not trying to hear excuses here. Okay. Like if you're an adult, you have the ability to get to bed early and be a real adult and stop acting like a child. Even if you're in your thirties or forties and going to bed at like 2am, like an 18 year old. Okay. Time to grow up. So you need to be disciplined and get to bed right after Isha. You need to set the tone for your family. If you're complaining, Oh, my family goes to bed late. Okay, great. Well, you're a leader, especially if you're a man, Get your family to go to bed on time and be disciplined. But in order to lead your family, you have to be able to lead yourself. And that's the first step, right? But again, practical steps, pray Isha as soon as it's time, have good sleep hygiene. So I can send you some more research on that and like how to sleep and get better sleep quality, such as like wearing an eye mask, not being on your phone right before bed, all that stuff. And then get it for Tahud for Fredger and even get it for Tahudjid. Take advantage of your morning instead of wasting it and then complaining that you feel like you don't have time. So many people, they come on the phone, oh, I don't have time. Oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I need to procrastinate. Well, Dude, are you kidding me? Like, that's like the most childish excuse I've ever heard. It sounds like a 15 year old who's like saying why he, didn't, why he doesn't want to clean his room. Okay. So if that's you right now, I'm not trying to be mean or offensive or rude. I'm just saying, look, you're an adult. So start acting like an adult and start practicing time management and proper life skills that you should have learned earlier, but you're going to learn it and apply it today. And I'm here to help you. Okay. I want to help you with these things because more Muslims need to start taking ownership. You know, people say that men are not being men these days. And you know, a lot of adults are just being children. And I see it all the time with people who don't even know how to meal prep. People don't know how to set their schedule properly. People who eat junk food and sugar, like a child with no discipline because you don't have parents supervising anymore, but you're an adult. You got to be your own parent now. Okay. And especially if you have kids, you got to set the right example for them and lead yourself. Okay. Be an adult. So, <clears throat> let's go into the example of what it looks like when you're a master of time. Okay. So this is what you want to get to. Okay. So the master of time wakes up at 5 a.m., prays the Hajjid, eats breakfast, prays Fajr. If you really want to be a pro, you pray Fajr at the Masjid. Then you go to the gym, you work out, you exercise, or maybe it's a rest day. So you go for a walk, right? You work out from home if you have home equipment, right? Uh, let's say that you're going to the Masjid. A lot of Masjids have Fajr between 6 and 6.30 right now. So the worst case scenario is you're going to get to the gym by 7 a.m. Now, 7 a.m., you hit your workout and I'm going to show you how to get your workout down to less than an hour. So at 8 a.m., you can head home, shower, have your protein shakes, start your work at 9 a.m. Especially if you work from home, you have no excuse. I know you feel more lazy because you're working from home. Well, guess what? You have more time. So take advantage of that time and stack your morning with stuff that makes you feel motivated, like working out. That's the, the best benefit. Even if you didn't lose weight, even if you didn't get healthier, like losing weight and getting healthy as a side effect. But the thing that you're truly going to get out of working out in the morning is you start your day with momentum, with motivation. So you stop being in this like pandemic mode, lockdown mode, work from home mode where you're being lazy all the time and you actually feel motivated and excited about life again. That is the greatest benefit that you can get from working out. And if you're not getting that benefit in your life right now, you are truly missing out. So let that be your motivation. Do it for your mental health. Do it for your happiness. Do it to build your character and be disciplined and actually have a high quality of life instead of just being this person who's floating through life, not achieving anything and not even being happy. Okay. So again, uh, that's what I want to share with you. So <laughs> 9 a.m. now, you're going to start work. And by the time you start work, after having such an empowering morning, you're going to have way more energy. You're going to be way more awake than if you just rolled out of bed because you went to sleep after Fudger. And so you're probably going to get your work done way faster and finish before 5 p.m. You're going to have so much time, you don't even know what to do with it. And the best thing is, if you have kids, you can hang out with your kids. You can take your kids to the park, go for, go for a walk with them, be even more active. Now you're burning even more calories, getting even better shape, staying in even better shape, right? And let's say that you don't have kids, great. You have time in the evening to get married <laughs> or to spend time with your partner uh, so you can build that connection and eventually have kids, right? Uh, to be intimate, whatever it may be. Uh, you can spend time working on yourself. You can start a side hustle if you're a nine to fiver who wants to start a business or you can spend more time working out and go work out twice a day if you want, right? But if you have kids, obviously you're not gonna probably have time to work out twice a day. So just, you know, take advantage of all the time you have because you're getting your work done so fast. You have more time than you know what to do with, okay? Now, obviously, if you're in like the startup field and even in corporate, a lot of guys end up working out, uh, working overtime, but especially if you're in a startup world, you're very likely to end up working out overtime or have to put out fires in the business or whatever. 
at least you already got your workout in so that you don't end up losing your workout. See, that's why for 90% of people working out in the evening doesn't work. Even for me, if I save my workout for the evening, there is a higher chance than not that I'm gonna end up skipping in, I'm gonna be tired, I'm not gonna feel like it. For so I do my workout in the morning, my whole day is amazing, I have tons of energy. If I do my workout in the evening, my whole day is less energetic and I end up being more likely to skip it because I'm not gonna have time in the evening because work might bleed or especially if I didn't work out in the morning, I'm gonna work slower, which means I'm gonna be less proactive, I'm gonna get things done less fast, I'm gonna have to you know, take longer, all that stuff. So again, super, super important that you're sequencing your day optimally to get the best results possible across all areas of life, okay? now. The next thing is now you're going to have your lunch break. Okay. Now for your lunch break, you know, you have the opportunity to eat and pray though her. And we're going to talk about how to meal prep, all that stuff. Super, super important life skills today. Okay. 5 PM, you know, you might need to pray after earlier than this. Cause now the days are getting shorter, all that stuff. But you know, let's say that right now you pray after, you know, around four or 5 PM, you head home, you eat dinner, you spend some family time, you pray Maghrib, you pray Isha, right? You go straight to sleep. No wasting time after Isha. No wasting time after Isha. All right. No wasting time after Isha. That's not what you want to do, okay? You want to be able to go to bed right after Isha. Don't waste time doing stuff. Like, look, on the weekends, that's when you can binge watch TV if you want or whatever else you want to do or used to waste time doing during the week. Or you can go have extensive family time. You can do all the stuff on the weekend. You, you should meal prep on the weekend too, right? Once in a while, in the middle of the week, you might have a family emergency, but that is usually the exception. That shouldn't be the rule. And if it is, you got to figure out some boundaries or like figure out some root cause solutions instead of just always banditing stuff up to solve these family problems or whatever. And you might have some screw ups during the week too. That's normal. And it takes time to get used to this type of schedule. But you know, over the next couple of weeks, I want you to work towards a schedule. And for people who we work with inside of our coaching program, it takes only a week or two with the accountability, coaching, consulting, troubleshooting that we do to get our clients in this rhythm within the first one to two weeks. Okay. It's amazing. SubhanAllah. And then once you get into this rhythm, you'll never want to go back because you'll realize how much better it is in every area of your life. Okay. Uh, and then also on the weekend, like I said, meal prep. All right. Perfect. So that's the master of time. Let's talk about nutrition. So speaking of being a grown up and speaking of meal prep, let's talk about nutrition. So like I was saying before, lots of Muslim adults eat like little kids. They binge on sweets with zero discipline. They eat junk food. They have no regard for their health, but there's two differences. The difference is you don't have your parents to hold you accountable to not eat junk food or excess sweets. And you're older now, so you can't get away with eating junk without having serious consequences on your energy, your health, your mood, etc. Okay, so you need to be able to grow up and hold yourself accountable like a real adult and take care of your health. Your body is an amana. Your body has rights over you. So if you're treating your body like absolute junk, not getting enough sleep, eating junk food, ruining your health, leading yourself to diseases that are preventable like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and of course, to some degree, like, you know, you might be the healthiest person in the world, you might still have a heart attack, but you're a lot less likely to have a heart attack if you eat clean versus if you're eating, you know, uh, super, super oily food all the time and eating all the sugar and not working out at all and never moving around ever. Like, like tell me who's like more likely to have a heart attack, a heart attack, the person who works out every day, they're fit, they're healthy, they eat healthy. The person who's sitting on the couch, giant belly, high body fat, you know, 500 pounds <laughs> and eats a bunch of junk every single day. They binge on ice cream and curry and biryani and they put extra oil on it and they put extra oil on their pizza and they eat pizza every day. Who do you think is more likely to have a heart attack? Okay. So I know, yes, Qadr, you know, the Qadr, the, there's to some degree, things are out of our control, but at the end of the day, Allah has created his plan for us and he gives us opportunities, but Allah gave us free will to make the right decisions. And just like how we're accountable to the choices that we made on the day of judgment, did you allow shaitan to tempt you? Or did you say on Surat al-Mustaqeem? Obviously pray to Allah to keep you on Surat al-Mustaqeem, but you got to hold yourself accountable to, to, to not look at the haram thing, to not go do the haram things, to not eat haram, to not skip your prayer. You have to hold yourself accountable to decide to get up when you don't feel like it and go pray to decide to not eat that gelatin or that pork or that alcohol or whatever it may be, right? And be a good Muslim. So you are accountable to make those decisions on the day of judgment. And likewise, you can't just say, oh, Allah, please help me eat healthy and then take zero action whatsoever to get up off the couch and actually prep some healthy food, order some healthy food and expect that healthy food's gonna rain out of the sky, okay? Yes, I know in the Quran, there was, uh, you know, the verse where Bani Israel, you know, the, the, the manna and uh, food rained out of the sky for them, but that's probably not gonna happen to you. Okay, it might, but it's pretty unlikely. Like try making dua right now, if it didn't happen, Let's try to take it into your own hands and understand that Allah has given you a responsibility to take the free will that you have and make the right decisions. Okay. So I don't want to hear it. And if you use Qadr as an excuse, you're just lying to yourself. Okay. Like Qadr, yes, Qadr exists, but is your Qadr to watch this video and take zero action? Is your Qadr to watch this video, learn some things, and then go take action? Did Allah just create me to, to spread all this information, have nobody apply it? Or did Allah create me to share this information with you that you've so desperately wanted and needed for so long and now you go apply it? What, what makes more sense to you? What makes more sense in Allah's plan? Well, 
think about what you know Allah is obviously the greatest and you know he 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 has an intelligent plan for everything so this is how the plan is supposed to work you're supposed to watch this and you're supposed to go apply what you're learning okay and again there's plenty of people who are applying the free stuff that they're learning from me every single day getting great results and there's plenty of people who hire us and get amazing results inside of our programs so why not you so go and apply what you're learning and stop making excuses all right it's time to grow up and hold yourself accountable so anyways that was just my long rant because I am so tired of hearing excuses. I get so many messages on Instagram of people just making a million excuses. Stop telling yourself you don't have time and go make the time. Go review that time management section. All right, anyways. So hold yourself accountable, be an adult, and thankfully you've got Coach Munir who's gonna teach you how to do nutrition properly. Um, I'm not gonna go super deep in nutrition like concepts right now. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of go more into the basics, but again, I've got hundreds of videos on Instagram and tons of videos on YouTube covering this much more deeply as far as the science of nutrition. But today we're gonna go more into the practical steps of, steps of how to actually meal prep. So <coughs> the, first, uh, the first thing that you need to understand about nutrition is eating healthy doesn't mean that it can't taste good. So do you like kebabs? Do you like curry chicken? Do you like halim? Do you like biryani? Do you like tacos, Italian pizza, teriyaki chicken? Cool, tons of healthy, easy recipes that we can make in a very simple, one to two hour a week meal prep where literally on a Saturday or Sunday, you block out one to two hours, you meal prep, you've got delicious food for the whole week. Uh, Cause obviously in that nine to five schedule, you're not gonna have time to cook much during the week. So that's why an important life skill that you need to learn as an adult, as a grown up, is to meal prep so you don't end up just ordering a bunch of junk food in the week and destroying your health. Okay. So again, if you don't if you don't meal prep and you don't, you know, and you just go and eat whatever, it's time to grow up. It's time to learn these life skills you know, respectfully, it's time to grow up. Okay. So let's do it. Let's learn how to meal prep. So meal prep is super simple. All you got to do is get, so go, go to the grocery store. You can even order. You don't even have to leave your house nowadays. You can even order groceries. Okay. Now, <coughs> as I mentioned, I'm uh, still a little bit sick. Probably have the editor cut that one out, but anyways, uh, cut off the coughs. But again, when you go to do your grocery shopping for the week, whether you go to the halal store because maybe you're not able to order halal meat, although actually if you order open nature beef, uh, that's actually halal, okay? If you order empire chicken, it's kosher, and many scholars would agree that, you know, and some scholars would disagree as usual, there's always, you know, differing opinions, but uh, many scholars would agree that meat that is kosher is considered halal. So you can order kosher chicken from Costco, from uh, Trader Joe's, unfortunately you can't order food, uh, from Ralph's, slash Kroger, they have uh, Kosher Chicken Empire, right, is the name of the brand. Uh, just be careful, because I've noticed that sometimes there's bone fragments in it, so just make sure that you like feel the chicken and make sure there's no bones in it. Uh, but there you go, you can see chicken breast, uh, kosher slash halal, uh, you can get open nature beef, which is halal from Australia, halal certified, hand slaughtered, we had people check and verify. So again, all you gotta do is get your proteins for the week, you gotta get your carbs for the week, and you gotta get your veggies for the week. And that's all you gotta do when you're doing your grocery shopping and you're, you're setting up for your meal prep. Um, I usually don't meal prep my breakfast because oatmeal is like very easy to make fresh, but you know, let's say you're doing eggs or egg whites, you could prep those too. And I actually have some clients who do prep their overnight oats on the weekend as well. Okay. So totally up to you. Most of my clients do their breakfast fresh cause it's just oatmeal and protein shake and what with, with some fruit. Uh, and, and obviously the quantities are specified depending on the client, but I have some people who do their overnight oats or I have some people who will like prep eggs or egg whites for the week because that's what they want to do for breakfast from the menu that we've given them. Okay. So. Um, let me find the next slide here. So, uh, so that's, so that's the first step is getting your groceries in. Okay. Now, next step, uh, as I mentioned before, the quantities and totals of your meal prep are going to depend on your unique meal plan, but I'll give like an average example. That being said, if you need more help with this, uh, again, as I always say, if you have time, but money's tight, just go through all my other free videos, study them, watch them multiple times, test it out on yourself. And you'll be able to obviously learn how to set your macros to make sure you're following the right meal plan to get the results you want. Now, obviously, if you don't have a lot of time, but you got money because you're working a bunch, so you don't have time, but you're making a lot of money, alhamdulillah, just hire us to do this for you because it makes way more sense economically uh, as opposed to just like wasting time figuring out on your own if you don't have time, but you do have money, okay? But like I said, if money's tight and you have plenty of time, it makes more sense to figure out for yourself since coaching would be out of budget. So once you've set your quantities, that's when we can then obviously buy the right amount of food. Now, for the purposes of this example in this video, I'm just gonna say, let's say you're doing three meals a day, oatmeal and protein shake for meal one, aka breakfast, uh, which again, you could do it fresh every morning or meal prep overnight oats. And then for lunch and dinner, let's say you're doing eight ounces of lean meat measured raw every single day. Your carb portion is about 40, 50 grams of carbs per meal, and you're doing half to one cup of veggies. Okay, that's a fairly average measurement for what most people are gonna uh, require as far as their nutrition requirements and meals, okay? So that means if you're doing two, two meals, lunch and dinner, 
Okay, because obviously breakfast, we've already, you know, breakfast, we've already prepped. It's just the oatmeal and protein shake or the eggs, right? But all we're worried about right now is lunch and dinner. That's all we have to prep. So that's only just two meals a day that you have to prep, right? Each meal has eight ounces of lean protein and you're doing two of those a day. So that's 16 ounces, one pound that you're doing of lean meat per day. And you're doing that seven days a week, which means all you need for your grocery shopping is seven pounds a week of lean meat <clears throat> for yourself, obviously. Now, if you're shopping for the family too, then obviously get some food for the family too, but that's it. So that's three pounds of organic chicken breast, uh, as an example, two pounds of 93% lean grass-fed ground beef, two pounds of wild-caught salmon. There you go. Now you've got seven pounds of lean meat, three different varieties, so you don't get bored. Maybe you want to do shrimp. So maybe you just do two pounds of chicken, one pound of shrimp, two pounds of beef, two pounds of salmon. Maybe instead of salmon, you want to do like some cod and some salmon, right? Maybe you want to do a little bit of fatty meat like chicken legs. So all we got to do is reduce the carb portion so the calorie total is the same. That's it. You can have some variety with this. For the first example, we'll keep it simple. And usually with clients, I have them just do simple, like only two or three types of meat the first week just to make it easy if they've never meal prepped before. But if you've already meal prepped in the past, yeah, super easy. We can do like five different types of meat. So you have like five or 10 different types of meals and you never get bored, right? And the recipes are super easy. I'll go through this in a sec. So now again, back to the grocery shopping. So uh, if you're doing 40 to 50 gram portions of carbs, which is about half a cup of cooked rice, or eight ounces of sweet potato. Again, two meals a day, seven days a week means either three and a half cups of cooked rice or seven pounds of sweet potato, potato, or maybe you combine it. Maybe you do like two cups of cooked rice, which is one cup of dry brown or basmati rice that you need to buy from the store that you may already have a big bag of rice and then three pounds of sweet potato. That's it. Now you've got your groceries for the week. And then lastly, your veggies, super important to get veggies for your fiber intake, your micronutrients, all that stuff. But remember when it comes to veggies, we don't wanna eat veggies that make us feel bloated. Like for me personally, I get bloated from broccoli, but green beans massively help me with my digestion. So what do I do? I don't eat broccoli because broccoli causes me to be bloated, tired, gassy, so it's negative for my metabolism, my energy levels. But green beans do the opposite where it helps me digest better and have better energy levels. Therefore, green beans are my main vegetable source that I use with my meal prep, okay? but maybe you don't like green beans or broccoli, but you like okra. Okay, great, do okra instead or do mixed veggies, whatever green veggies you like that you digest well, okay? So all you gotta do is just test it. Does it make me bloated or does it make me feel good? If it makes me feel good, great. Does it taste good? Can I eat this every day? Okay, great, I love okra, so I'm gonna do okra every single day. For the Pakistanis out there, okra is bindi, okay? So maybe you get a pouch of bindi, maybe you get a pouch of broccoli, maybe you get two pouches of green beans, one pouch of you know mixed veggies, whatever you wanna do, and there you go. You got your four cups of veggies for your 14 meals that you have to prep, two meals a day, seven days a week. Super simple. So now all you gotta do is prep them the way you like without using excess oil. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, so uh, probably have the editor cut out the coughing or we'll just keep things going. So editor cut out the coughing. All right, <laughs> so anyways, um, now that you have your ingredient list, now I want you to prep them the way that you like without using excess oil. So, you know, let's say you're prepping chicken breast, there's a lot of different things you can make. You can make curry chicken, right? You can slow cook or use the Instant Pot. Just remember the Instant Pot, you need to add a little bit of water versus with the slow cooker, you do not. Um, and you could also chicken bone broth for the Instant Pot instead of water, and that way you're bumping up the protein count even higher, right? So you make the chicken, maybe you use curry powder, maybe you use tandoori powder. You can literally use any zero calorie, natural, preservative-free spice powder that you want. And you don't even need to use any oil. Don't use any oil so we can keep the calories low. If you add oil, you're adding more calories, which means that you're not going to lose as much fat because you're not going to be in as much of a deficit, right? So boom, there you go. It's a healthy, easy way to make curry chicken. The slow cooker makes it super tender. The Instant Pot, as long as you add a little bit of water, makes it nice and tender and not dry or anything, right? Let's say you want to make teriyaki chicken, do the exact same thing, but instead of using curry powder, use coconut aminos, mushrooms, onions, a light drizzle of honey or lemon. And what you could do is maybe you don't wanna do teriyaki slow cooked chicken, maybe you just wanna do it in the oven, you can glaze the chicken with, you know, just, just mix the uh, mix a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of uh, coconut aminos and a little bit of honey in like, you know, a water thing or in like one of those little uh, spray bottles or, you know, the little uh, sauce bottle. From there, just glaze the chicken with a light glaze, oven bake it for like 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and boom. Uh, or you know, 15, 20 minutes until it's fully cooked. You know, depends on the quality of your oven, all that stuff. But there you go. Now you've got some delicious glazed chicken and you just chop it up into pieces. Boom, throw it in your meal preps, just split it into even quantities. So if you got three pounds of chicken and you're doing eight ounces per meal, all you gotta do, you don't even have to measure each individual thing because that's gonna take a lot of time. Like obviously you can measure it and yes, chicken loses 25% of its weight. So you would do six ounce measurement, put it in the thing. But that just takes way too long. The easiest way to do it, I say, okay, cool, I've got all my chicken now, I've chopped it up, now let me just put it into even six portions in six different meal prep containers. Boom, now I don't even have to measure away anything, I just have to go buy three pounds from the store, don't even have to measure it, the store has, okay, they have one pound things, so buy three of those one pound things, or maybe you go to the halal butcher and you say, hey, give me three pounds of ch chicken breast, please, boom, they give it to you, 
easy. Now all you got to do is just split it into six containers. You don't have to measure anything once. You don't even need to own a food skill and you can still meal prep properly. That's how easy it is. Okay. So uh, again, back to the recipes, barbecue chicken. Okay. Same thing, but use some low calorie natural barbecue sauce. Boom. Now you got some barbecue chicken, either slow cooked or oven baked. Be careful with the oven. You have to do lower temperature because barbecue sauce burns easily, but slow cooker, super easy to make. Shawarma chicken, same thing, but with shawarma seasoning, super easy. The easiest thing ever. Slow cooker is the best investment ever. And if you're not patient, then just use the instant pot, okay? But slow cooker, you just set it and forget it. You can even do that midweek. Like, let's say you go to work or you go to bed, just set the slow cooker or you're gonna go take a shower. Well, it's gonna take a little longer than it's gonna take for you to shower, but again, super easy. Um, let's say you wanna do beef, right? Okay, great, you can make tacos. Do a light spray avocado oil, add taco seasoning, saute it in the pan. Boom, now you got taco beef. You can combine it with some gluten-free tortillas to hit your 40 to 50 gram carb portion. Uh, you know, there you go, right? Pasta with meat sauce. Use red lentil pasta just because regular pasta has gluten and gluten causes inflammation for most people. Um, but, you know, you can do red lentil pasta, 40 to 50 gram carb portions for every 50 gram protein portion. And, you know, eight ounces of lean ground beef is roughly 50 grams of protein. Cook the beef in the slow cooker or the instant pot or even in a regular pot with some low calorie tomato sauce. You can add mushroom, basil, onion, whatever you want to do. Boom, you got some nice pasta with meat sauce. You combine those portions. Boom, now you got pasta with meat sauce, right? You want to make some kebabs? Mix the beef with kebab seasoning, shawarma seasoning. Maybe you can add some cayenne pepper if you like it spicy. Maybe you can add some garlic if you like it garlicky. Maybe you can add some ginger. You can add some Himalayan pink salt. So it's got that, you know, it's, it's nicely salted. It's got some good flavor. If you have high blood pressure, be careful with your sodium quantities. But if you don't have high blood pressure, you can add as much Himalayan pink salt as you want. Uh, just make sure you're drinking enough water though so you help flush it out. And when you work out, you'll sweat out a lot of that salt too. And Himalayan pink salt is a lot better than like table salt, right? And then from there, you can either cook the kebabs in the pan with a light spray of avocado oil, or you can barbecue them, or you can oven bake them. So it's super easy. And beef has a little bit of, so, of its own natural fat that it'll cook in the meat. You don't have to add any oil because if you add oil, you're going to kind of ruin the health of the meal because now it's got way too many calories for how much protein versus if you just do a light spray of avocado oil, you're good to go, right? Same thing with salmon. You could use the air fryer, but personally, I like to oven bake it with garlic, pepper, Himalayan pink salt, or I like to glaze it with that honey, lemon, salt kind of mix, okay? Meal prep is super easy. And then you just put it in the containers. <laughs> and then from there, all you got to do is make your rice. You probably know how to make rice. But if you don't even want to make your rice, you can even buy frozen brown or basmati rice and frozen sweet potatoes. You can just microwave them or air fry the potatoes fresh every single day. And as far as veggies, I like to keep them frozen. I just put them in the meal prep containers with my, with my rice, which I just do in the rice cooker, with my meat, which I do in the oven or the slow cooker. And then I put the frozen veggies in there and then I put the whole thing in the fridge and the veggies will thaw out naturally in the fridge and then they'll steam when I put them in the microwave to heat up my meal prep. Boom. Now you don't even need any oil whatsoever to make your entire meal, which keeps, you know, the calories low uh, and the protein and compost carbs high. And again, I don't want to go too deep into it, like the science on nutrition, but I have other videos. If you're curious why low fat, high protein, high complex carbs is the best you know, macro split for energy, fat loss, muscle growth, satiation, everything. Check out my other videos where I, where I talk about that, okay? In some cases, of course, there are exceptions and there are some people who do better on higher fats and lower carbs, but this is the split that works best for 90, 95% of people because it gives you the flexibility to eat carbs with your family because you don't, because your body knows how to process carbs and use them for muscle growth and keeps your metabolism high. So you're constantly burning fat. And even if you have a cheat meal once a week, even twice a week, you're still burning fat, keeping your metabolism high, okay? <clears throat> so again, Nutrition is perhaps one of the most nuanced elements uh, in addition to lifestyle of fitness. But if you have more questions on any of the above, either see my other videos, comment below this video with your questions, or DM me on Instagram at the Modern Muslim Man. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next section. So, excuse me. The next section is exercise slash working out slash training. So, the first thing you need to understand when it comes to exercise is by far the best bang for your buck, especially if you don't have a lot of time, is strength training, okay? Strength training can be done from home with zero equipment, kind of, like we've gotten people results with that, but the results are far superior if you have either equipment or you have gym access, okay? So since that's the ideal scenario, let's cover some home gym essentials and then I'll go into what routines to do for the average nine to fiver who wants to get the most out of their workout regimen. So first off, home gym essentials. You need a foam roller so you can mobilize, recover. It also help you relax. And also having a foam roller mobilizing, stretching, you know, reducing stiffness and tightness will actually help you to increase your energy levels because pain drains your brain, okay? 
when your shoulders are tight, your back's tight, your legs are tight, your hips are tight, tightness makes you tired, okay? Foam rolling helps us to fix that and prevent injuries as well. We also need resistance bands. So for the same reason as the above, we need resistance bands so we can stretch. And this can also be used instead of the cable machine for some exercises for a home gym. Now, the next thing that you need is you need a squat rack with a barbell and some weights. So compound lifts, which are done typically with the barbell, most of them at least, are gonna give you the most benefit as far as metabolism, fat burning, muscle growth, hormonal optimization, stress relief, functional strength. Now, obviously functional strength, there's a lot of body weight stuff and dumbbell stuff that's really good for functional strength as well, sometimes superior. But, you know, getting those barbell lifts in is very important for having a healthy body composition and getting, you know, optimal results. Now, from there, you also need adjustable dumbbells, right? So if you're already strong or you used to be super strong and athletic, which means you're going to gain strength back very quickly, I want you to get up to 80 to 100 pound adjustable dumbbells, okay? So like 100 pounds each side. Again, if you're like super strong already and within the next six months, you'll be able to bench press that or squat that, right? Uh, or row that. But if you're not as strong or you've never worked out before them, you just need to get up to like 50 pounds and that should last you for the next six to 12 months, inshallah. But don't go cheap with these, okay? Like there's some cheap ones that go up by 11 pound increments, like they're 11 pounds or 22 pounds or 33 pounds. Those absolutely suck, okay? Get the ones that have either two and a half or five pound increments so you can gradually increase the weight, which is one of the vital important components of strength training is progressive overload and being able to slowly increase weight, slowly increase reps, slowly increase sets, slowly decrease rest periods. So you're giving yourself a progressively more and more challenging stimulus to stimulate your body to adapt, grow, improve. Metabolism goes up when we gain muscle, which means we lose more fat, okay? And ideally two and a half pound increments for the dumbbells. If you could find it, those are kind of hard to find. So, you know, five pound increments is good. Like I have the power block pros, uh, they actually only go up to 50 pounds, so I still work out at the gym mostly. I just kind of have my home gym as a backup, but I can still get a decent workout with 50 pound dumbbells and then I have weights up to like 300 pounds, right? So I just have to go higher reps if I'm working out from home. Uh, you need a bench. You can get a relatively inexpensive yet high quality bench on Amazon. And then if you're training at the gym, obviously make sure it has all of the above as well. So don't go to Planet Fitness. They don't have proper squat racks. They have Smith machines. Smith machine absolutely sucks for most people. Uh, I always hurt my shoulder whenever I try to bench press on a Smith machine or like my knees when I try to squat because it's an unnatural movement. It locks you to an unnatural, unnatural pattern and groove of movement. So again, some people do do well in a Smith machine, especially like older, older people. Like I have a really good friend who's a 60 year old bodybuilder and he loves using it. Or I have another friend who's a 47 year old bodybuilder. Now 47 isn't old and most 47 year olds, you know, once you've built your foundation, I'd still recommend that you use free weights. But I have a 47 year old friend who's a bodybuilder and he's been bodybuilding since he was like 15. So after 30 years of lifting weights in the beginning of his career, he wasn't really, you know, using the best form or stretching or anything. He's got a couple of joint issues. For him, he actually prefers the Smith machine. I do have a 49 year old client who does do better on certain exercises with, you know, machines, not the Smith machine, but more so like cables and stuff, because it's less likely to trigger his, you know, uh, old past injuries. But if you don't have past injuries, let's keep it that way. Let's build your functional strength. Let's get you going. But anyways, don't go to Planet Fitness. It's a really, you know, bad environment anyways, because it's just a bunch of lazy people who don't take their fitness seriously. I have like two clients who are still training at Planet Fitness, getting good results. But most of my clients, I advise that you go more to like, you know, Lifetime Fitness, which is nice and high end, beautiful gym, mashallah. 24 hour fitness, LA fitness, or maybe you have a local bodybuilding gym or a local like, you know, fitness culture gym, which means it's going to have good equipment. It's going to be an inspirational environment of people who take their fitness seriously. Uh, just obviously, you know, as I said, we go to the gym in the mornings because it works better for our schedule, but also because it's the best time to avoid crowds because some gyms get really crowded, which is going to make your workout take longer, which is another disadvantage to going in the evening. And then also the more people there are, especially later in the day, the more there's going to be like women who are dressed inappropriately. So especially as a guy who's trying to lower your gaze, it's definitely easier to go in the morning because there are less obstacles to have to avoid. And it's easier to just not have to lower your gaze as much because there's less, you know, women walking around wearing nothing. So usually best to go in the morning for that reason and for the crowds. Cool. So uh, next up, now we've got our gym set up. Here's what we're, each workout needs to be, be consistent of, okay? So if you want to work out in the best way possible, here's what your workout should look like every single day. First off, you want to warm up using foam rolling, bands, any specific posture work to work on, uh, you know, fixing any past injuries and fixing your posture because we spend so much time in the modern day and age sitting on the computer all day so our hips get tight our shoulders become rounded forward our neck gets tight our back gets tight our shoulders get tight so you got to be able to fix all that with the foam rolling and stretching to get your posture proper and good okay from there after you've done your warm-up you want to do your main strength exercises first and get these in while you're fresh so you can maximize your performance okay 
And then after that, we got our assistance and accessory exercises to finish off the muscle. And then from there, optional, if you have time, you can do a cool down recovery, whether that's stretching, sauna, a combination. Typically, I'm pretty tight on time, so I won't really do a whole lot of stretching after my workout, but I always do my stretching before the workout. Now, obviously, if you have injuries, like I have a client who's got, you know, a lot of basketball injuries, like knees, shoulder, back. So he has to foam roll after his workout or he's going to get really, really tight. And when I have time, I do too. Uh, thankfully, my injuries, I could fix them just by stretching beforehand. But again, this is what your workout should look like. And as you can see, I've time stamped it here on the slideshow for YouTube. Uh, 15 minutes is how long your warm up should take. 15 minutes is how long your strength exercise should take. 15 minutes is how long your assistance should take. Uh, cool down recovery, 10, 15 minutes. So you're looking at about 45 to 60 minutes per workout. Now, in the beginning, when you're learning new exercises, it might take you 90 minutes, to be honest, uh, if you're doing all this stuff, which is why we usually start beginners off with a very simple workout routine, lower volume, so you can still get it done you know, in a short amount of time. But you know, if, if, if you're really truly serious about this and you wanna invest a week or two into doing like 90 minute workouts three times a week, to learn the form, get the best results possible. And then after that, you know it's gonna be sustainable like four or five minutes, three times a week. There you go, you're good to go. Now, some people I have, now this is again for nine to fivers. So if you have a nine to five, you can spend 45, 60 minutes working out. I have some clients who work 80 hours a week or who run big businesses or even who are more in the startup business who are working 80 plus hours a week. For those people, like if you work 40 hours a week, you have a little more time to work out. If you work 80 hours a week and you have kids, I have some guys where I just give them a 10 minute workout and that's all the time they can find, but that's enough and that's definitely better than nothing and it gets them great results and it boosts their energy and then because they have more energy, they work more efficiently, they get their work done faster, now they have more time to work out and we baby step them up over time. But for the nine to fiver, which is the purpose of this video, 45, 60 minutes, boom. Okay, so next up, um, for more info on how to set up your training split, check out my strength training for fat loss video. It was actually one of the first videos I did like way at the beginning of this year. So if you're on Instagram, you're gonna have to scroll back like way through all my posts, like hundreds of posts to like the very beginning, like the first 100. I have a very in-depth video on strength training or what you could do is you can go to my YouTube um, and you also have to scroll down quite a bit, but I've only got like, I think, I don't know, 50 videos on YouTube or something like that. So you could find it towards the beginning, strength training for fat loss, okay? That's what the video is called. Um, so again, if you have plenty of time, but money is tight, go through all my videos, study them, watch them multiple times, take notes, go implement an experiment. If time is tight, but you're making money because you're working a lot, it makes more sense to just hire a coach. So just hire us because obviously you're not gonna have time to study at all, you know, on your own and study all my in-depth stuff and experiment and refine stuff on yourself. And honestly, like, if you work with us, we can get you doing it pro from the get-go, inshallah, which means that you're gonna get much better, faster results. Again, if you have money, but you don't have time, obviously if you don't have money, but you do have time, tons of free resources, watch my videos multiple times, study them, learn them, experiment them on yourself, and within the next couple months, you'll start to figure things out and you'll start to be good to go, inshallah. Okay, so next up, uh, the last component, the fourth pillar of fitness is mindset. So I have a few in-depth videos on mindset on my YouTube, and I'll attach some of them in the description below on YouTube as well. And if you're on Instagram, uh, just pop over to the link in my bio and you can find my YouTube that way. But let's briefly review mindset for this video, okay? So first off, you need to have both internal accountability as far as like the internal drive within for yourself, uh, and you also need external accountability, okay? So when it comes to internal accountability, okay, we're gonna go <coughs> somewhat in depth with this. So the reason needs to be greater than the resistance, okay? So like, you know, there's a couple different types of people, there's a couple different reasons why people wanna get fit. Uh, if your goal is health, right? Let's say you have diabetes, heart disease, stroke, high cholesterol, stuff like that in your family, and maybe your dad or your mom got diagnosed with these things in their 40s, 50s, even as early as their 30s. Maybe you had a loved one or family member, maybe your father or your mother had a heart attack in their 40s or 50s, or right now you're in your 30s and you're starting to think about yourself or your health, or maybe you're starting into your 40s and you're like, oh man, I've already got high, high blood pressure, I've got you know high A1C, I'm diabetic, pre-diabetic, whatever it may be, and you realize that it's gonna get worse, then that should be enough to get you to go take action, but you know, there's a lot of people who, despite already having some health consequences where they feel tired all day, all that stuff, their health is poor, they're at risk for these different diseases, it's not enough to know that it might happen in the next couple of years. You actually have to run that scenario and imagine that scenario on your mind. Because remember, the reason needs to be greater than the resistance. So let's say that your reason is because I want to get healthy because I might get heart disease or diabetes, but the resistance is, oh man, it's hard to get up early. Oh man, it's hard to eat healthy. Oh man, I'm addicted to unhealthy food. Oh man, working out is hard. Oh man, I'm lazy. Okay, great. It's a lot of resistance, not that much reason. If those are all your resistances, okay, great. Obviously learning from my content is gonna teach you how to do this in an easier way, but there's still the resistance of, oh man, I gotta do try something new. Oh, I have to try something different. Oh, I have to change. Oh, I have to put in the work. Oh, I have to be disciplined. Oh, I have to do all these things. Okay, that's all your resistance, okay? Well, if your reason is just, hey, it'd be nice to be healthy. 
that's still not enough, okay? Your reason needs to be greater than the resistance. So in order to get your reason higher, here's what you need to do. Dude, if I get diabetes, okay, I'm gonna have to go do doctor visits, spend all this money on pills, be, go through all this pain, have to check my blood sugar all the time, all that stuff, it's gonna freaking suck, right? And then, you know, maybe later down the road, I might lose a foot, okay? I might have to cut off my foot, I might die an early death, you know, I might be in a position where I become a burden to my kids, my family. And what kind of example am I setting for my kids? My kids are gonna end up having diabetes and having all these problems too, and they're gonna pass it on to their next generation, and their next generation, and their next generation, I can't let that happen. I gotta be a leader. I don't want my kids to suffer from this. I don't want my kids to look at me and be like, oh, there's dad, he's lazy. You know, he's just a lazy guy sitting on the couch, doesn't even have energy to play with us. I don't want that to happen. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna conquer all this resistance right now because my reason is greater than my resistance and this is truly important to me. If that's the psychology you can get yourself into, my friend, you're gonna finally change. But if you're just saying, eh, yeah, it'd be nice to be healthy. Eh, meh, whatever, meh. But then you're like, oh, it's so hard because blah, 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 blah. You're never gonna go take action. So stop minimizing your reason and start maximizing your reason and say, dude, I have high cholesterol. My so-and-so died of a heart attack and I'm not gonna let that happen to me because that broke my heart when my family member passed away from a heart attack because they used to eat a bunch of unhealthy food and they never worked out. And I don't want my kids to have to go through that heartbreak. I don't want my parents to have to go through that heartbreak. I don't want my wife or husband to have to go through that heartbreak because I was too lazy to fix my health. That would hurt me so much more if my family had to go through the heartbreak that I went through when so-and-so died in my family if my family had to go through that, I'm willing to go through the pain of waking up early, going and taking action, meal prepping, working out, doing all these hard things. And then guess what? The best part is once you get yourself to finally go take action because the reason it became greater than the resistance, the pain of staying the same was greater than the pain of change, greater than the pain of change, and you finally go take action, you're gonna get into momentum and it becomes easier. You're like, whoa, I feel so much better. I feel healthy, I feel good, I have energy, my body doesn't hurt anymore. I should have started this years ago. I should have never gotten unhealthy in the first place. I'm performing better in my business, making more money. I'm performing better at work, getting my work done faster. Why did I spend the last 10, 20 years being unhealthy and inefficient? And that's gonna be your only regret instead of, you know, like you're never gonna regret and say, oh man, I'm, I regret that I decided to start working out. I regret that I spent money on a coach to start working out. Oh, I regret it. Unless you don't take action. Obviously, if you don't take action, then you're gonna regret it because you're gonna waste your money. So go take action, stay committed, do the, do the process, do the thing. But once you learn, once you get momentum, your life's gonna be so much better, you'll have zero regrets. But if you keep living the way you're living, be honest with yourself. Have you truly considered the potential ramifications of the path that you're on right now? Because I'm telling you right now, do you want to be a burden to your family? Do you want to break your family's heart if you die from you know one of these preventable diseases? If you have a stroke, do you want to be a burden to your family? Because if you do, then I can't help you. But if you are truly serious about change, then you will find that internal accountability in yourself to finally change and finally go take action and stop making excuses. So the reason needs to be greater than the resistance. Let's talk about energy, okay? Let's say every day feels like an uphill battle. You need 10 coffees just to get through a day, but you're sitting around saying, oh, it's too expensive to buy healthy food. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, I don't have time. Okay, great. Well, you're gonna keep suffering with energy and because you suffer with energy, you're not gonna be able to get your work done fast, which means you're gonna continue to not have time. And what else do you not have time or energy for? Your family, playing with your kids, Watch, they already grow up faster. You're gonna keep growing up faster and faster. Before you know it, they're gonna be adults out of the house. You're not even gonna have a good connection with them because you didn't really spend quality time with them when you were a kid. You know what you can do instead? Start doing healthy barbecues with your kids and then, and making healthy food. And guess what? Now you're setting a good example for your kids and you're doing your healthy meal prep for the weekend. It tastes good because it's barbecue. And now, instead of your kids just remembering you as some fat slob who was sitting on the couch not doing anything, eating junk food, setting a bad example, and now your kids become that too and you have to suffer all that pain, guess what? Instead, now your parents, your kids have fond memories of barbecues with dad, barbecues with mom, healthy food. They build these positive habits and your kids never have these health problems that you have right now and these energy problems that you have right now and they live a healthy, happy, successful life and they pass it on for generations to come. SubhanAllah, that's so much more beautiful than allowing yourself to be lazy and passing on these poor habits to your family. So that's the energy. So, so do you see how when we go deep with our motivation, we can make the reason greater than the resistance as opposed to just sitting around like, eh, yeah, my energy isn't good, but whatever, eh, as a normal, I'm just old, whatever. Okay, meh, 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 that meh mindset is the reason why you're not motivated. You gotta get motivated. You gotta be like, dude, I will not tolerate another day of not having energy. I will not tolerate another day where I feel so tired by the end of the day. I can't even play with my kids. I can't even focus when I'm praying Maghrib and Aisha. This is not acceptable. Allah gave me this body to be the best I could be and treat this body with respect and be a warrior, be an example for my family. So I'm gonna get into the gym. I'm gonna stop being lazy. I'm gonna shatter my excuses. I'm gonna hire a coach. I'm gonna get out there and go make this happen. That's the psychology I want you to get in. And 
If you apply for a spot within our program, that's the process that myself or my assistant coach and my consultant and my advisor is going to take you through before we enroll you because we want to make sure you're motivated and committed that you're actually going to do the work, inshallah. Okay, super important we talk about that and that we stop settling for the standard of laziness and make excuses and lying to ourselves we don't have time that so many Muslims have allowed themselves to settle for. That standard is terrible. we got to hold ourselves to a higher standard. And that's another part of internal accountability is realizing I want to be that full potential version of myself. I don't want to just be, you know, this lazy uncle or auntie. I don't want to be that washed up ex-athlete who says, oh, look, I used to have a six pack 20 years ago. Now I'm fat, right? Or, hey, you know, I never, I never ever worked out and got to experience what it feels like to actually be healthy and fit. And look, if you're an ex-athlete, you know how good it feels to feel healthy and fit. If you've never worked out before and you've spent your whole life in the state you're in right now, maybe it feels normal to you, but you have no idea what it feels like to actually have good energy. You just think that it's a normal part of life is not having energy. No, you're supposed to have energy and that's what it means to be healthy. Yes, even if you're in your 40s or your 50s, but especially in your 20s and your 30s, you're the prime of your life. But nowadays, you got people in their 40s who have better energy and physique than their 20s, including some of our clients. Why? Because health is the greatest wealth. Health is a new wealth. 40 is a new 20. 50 is a new 30. So get with the program. Get off this train of aging prematurely and becoming old and cranky and creaky and all that stuff and you know stiff and reverse the aging process using the principles of health that we're teaching you today. That's internal accountability. That's the mindset. Okay. So let's talk about uh, external accountability. So obviously if you have somebody like me screaming at you every single day and just keep it that top of mind and you know, you don't want to disappoint me because you know that what I'm about and what my philosophy is, that alone is going to hold you accountable. Okay. And that brings us to the topic of the two types of external accountability or the two types of external motivation. So we've got the internal motivation we just talked about previously is holding yourself to a higher standard. We'll talk a little more about that in a sec, but on the external level, you need a mix of support and professional accountability. And this is something I learned from Beatrice Koulian and Craig Ballantyne, who are two very successful entrepreneurs, much in the fitness industry. So support. So, so let's use an example. If you're, if you're running a marathon, support is the people on the sidelines cheering you on. So your family and your friends need to be on board with your health and fitness journey. And you need to put yourself in the right environment with positive friends who are going to motivate you and inspire you to be better. So that's support, support systems that you need around you. Professional accountability in the marathon example is your marathon coach. So somebody who you respect, who you really don't want to disappoint. So let's say you have a business coach or a marriage counselor. You don't want to disappoint them by showing up to the next meeting saying, oh, I didn't take action on the business stuff you told me to do. Uh, or, oh, I didn't fix those things about relationship. We still have the same issues. <laughs> well, if that's if that's what you deal with, we show up to your counselor, you're probably, you, you don't want to disappoint that person. So that puts a little bit of external accountability in addition to having positive supporters in your environment. Likewise, if you have a fitness coach and you're going to show up to the round table call and you're going to report something disappointing, again, we're not going to judge you, but you don't want to disappoint us. Like we're never going to be like, oh, you suck. You're a loser. Just be like, hey, no problem here. Let's put together some solutions. But even the fact that you have to show up and tell us that you had a, a week that was a loss, still show up because that's the whole point is show up, own your faults and go take better action next week. Growth mindset, always, always moving forward, always being proactive, pragmatic. But the fact that you have that meeting with us will hold you accountable to not want to disappoint us because you respect us, right? Um, and likewise, just being like in our WhatsApp group, you know, for members of the program, obviously that's going to motivate you to stay accountable every single day to make sure that you're seeing success and you're constantly surrounded by success, guys who work more than you, have more kids than you, who are still succeeding, winning, crushing it, that winning becomes contagious and you start winning too. So that's the mix of support and professional accountability is your coaches versus your fellow clients slash members in the program slash, you know, people in your family, your environment who are on board on this journey with you. And remember what I said earlier is that as a man, especially you gotta take leadership of your family. As a woman, even if your man's a leader, you're the one who's doing the cooking <laughs> in a traditional family environment. So you got to take leadership and make healthy food, right? I have a female client and she was telling me, you know, I'm, I'm doing really, really well with this food. You know, my husband likes it. My, my kids like it, but I'm worried when Ramadan comes around that people aren't going to like it. And then her husband was on the call and he says, Wallahi, I actually prefer this healthy food. It actually tastes good. It feels good. And I was like, I was like, exactly. So let's just, <laughs> let's just give that dawah of health to people in Ramadan. I promise they're probably not going to complain. And even if they do, okay, whatever, you can make a special oily version for them. But I'm telling you, most people like it. Now you're spreading the dawah of health and you're getting buttaka for helping them feel better and ask them how they feel after the food. Ask them, did you notice you had more energy and you weren't as gassy during Taraweh? They're going to say, yeah, actually I didn't have to go make wudu a bunch of times because I wasn't gassy. I felt good. I had energy. Say, guess what? It's because I made the food healthy. Here's the recipe. Boom. Now you're spreading the dawah of health. That's how we take leadership. Even for women, take leadership. Especially for men, you gotta lead your family, bro. If you're if your family is failing, that's your fault. You're in Islam, you know, that's the divine decree is that we are supposed to be the leaders of our family. So if you're sitting around letting your family be lazy, setting a terrible example, you gotta step up as a man. Don't just be an adult, don't just be a grown-up, be a man. Okay, be an adult, 
be a man. For both men and women, be an adult. For men, be a man, be a leader, be someone who can be respected as opposed to somebody who's just sitting on the couch being lazy, complaining, oh, I work so hard for my family. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, great. Well, you know what? Work hard for yourself too. And guess what? That's going to lead your family because your family doesn't just need your money. Your family needs you. Your family needs you to be your best. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking a lot about internal accountability, but external is going to help you to internalize it better. Why? I'll tell you why. Let me show you the three micro levels of long-term lifestyle change. Okay. So we've got habits, mindset, environment, and identity. So it's actually four micro levels. I got excited. I put four because all four are important. So your habits are like, okay, cool. Within the next two, three, four weeks, you're going to get in the habit of eating healthy. You're going to like how you feel. It's going to be easy. You're going to get in the habit of going to the gym where you feel weird if you don't go to the gym, just like how you feel weird if you don't drink your coffee or you don't, you know, uh, pray your five daily prayers. You're going to feel weird if you don't do it. So that's when you start to get into the habit and you start to feel off and depressed and weird and unhappy and tired if you don't get your workout in. And so that's where you start to build that habit. And then especially after 90 days, it's going to be way locked in. But even after the first like 27, 30 days, even after the first two, three weeks, you'll start to get into the habit. Okay. Your mindset is something we can fix on the front end. Like we just talked about a bunch, but it also comes down to your environment. So these things all tie in with each other and it comes down to your identity. Okay. So let's have a little bit of this real quick. Keep my caffeine flowing too. All right. So <laughs> basically, uh, and editor, you can cut that out. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, you might actually end up getting the unedited version. So if you're watching this right now, you're like, why do you keep saying editor? <laughs> uh, you might be getting the unedited version because I'm really excited to get this out to you guys. I don't even think I'm gonna go through edits. I think I'm just gonna send it to you guys. But obviously for these splices, definitely get the editor. All right, or edit this things out. Okay, cool. Or So like I said, three micro levels to long-term lifestyle change. So we've, we've shifted our habits. We start talking about the mindset, all the stuff we talked about previously. Uh, the last two elements are gonna be your environment and your identity. So this. So listen here, if you're surrounded by people who don't believe in Allah, they eat pork, they drink alcohol, they go gamble and stuff, you know, they, they're just constantly doing haram, they're constantly looking at women, what do you think is going to happen to you? Do you think you're going to be a good Muslim in that environment? Absolutely not. You got to get yourself out of that environment ASAP if that's you. And I know brothers who we've taken out of that environment, we put them in a healthy halal environment and guess what? They have improved their deen in addition to improving their fitness. SubhanAllah. May Allah help all those brothers and sisters to put themselves in better environments and become the best Muslims they can be and taste the true happiness that is the deen as opposed to the false pleasure that is, you know, idolized in the West. Okay. So may Allah help all of them. I mean, but likewise, when you think about fitness, okay, if you're surrounded by a bunch of people who eat donuts and biryani and gulab jamun all day, every day, even though they're adults and they're all fat and they have diabetes, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to become the fifth uncle, okay? If you're surrounded by four uncles, you're going to become the fifth uncle, right? But if you're surrounded by four fit uncles who are crushing in their career, crushing in business, crushing in their fitness, they're all shredded, they all got six packs, they still get to enjoy some flexibility and fun with the family because their metabolism is optimized, fired up because they're lifting weights every single week, three, four times a week, but they still eat healthy during the week, they're dialed in because they want to be the best performers they can be. Guess what? You're going to become the fifth, okay? So even if they're uncles, if they're healthy fit uncles in their 40s, and we got Muslim clients in their 40s with six packs, mashallah, guess what? You're going to become the fifth. You're going to become a champion. You're going to become a winner versus if you're surrounded by losers, you're going to become a loser. Now, I'm not trying to say that like anybody in the eyes of Allah is better or worse than anybody else, but the strong believer is more beloved to Allah than the weak believer in the context of faith. But if you think about it, fitness, your body's tied to everything. The stronger your body is, the stronger your mind becomes, the stronger your faith, your commitment to Allah and your ability to be the best Muslim you can be becomes. So be a strong Muslim and surround yourself with strong Muslims so you can be in the best environment. That's what we do for our clients is we put you guys in a WhatsApp group as well as the group calls, as well as connecting you with each other, you know, mini squads of accountability. And guess what that does? It helps you to, through your environment, to adopt better mindsets because your norm stops being, oh, just eat junk food, be fat, old, and lazy in your 40s and 50s it becomes, hey man, be a peak performer for the rest of your life, right? And then because your mindset shifts, your habits follow suit. And slowly your identity shifts. Your identity shifts from being, ah, I'm just a washed up ex-athlete. Oh, I'm just an old fat uncle. Oh, I'm just a not fit person. I'm not into fitness, meh, whatever, meh. Your identity stops being that low quality, unhappy, unsuccessful identity. And your identity becomes, hey, you know what? I'm the best Muslim I could be. I'm living at my full potential every day. I'm fit, I'm strong, I'm a strong believer. I'm a strong in body, I'm strong minded. I'm successful, I'm crushing it in all walks of life. I'm, you know, the best mother or father to my family, right? I'm the best, you know, son or daughter to my parents, right? I'm leading my family to better health. I got my parents eating healthy. I got myself eating healthy. I got my, my kids eating healthy. I'm setting a good example. That becomes your identity. And guess what? It's impossible to break this habit. See, our identity is part of what might hold you back. If your identity is, eh, I'm fat and lazy, eh, fitness isn't my thing, eh, I'm just a fat guy, whatever. No, you gotta break those identities because those are identities that are keeping you stuck in the old habits, mindsets, and environments. 
if your identity is, eh, I'm just a fat guy, eh, I'm just heavy, meh, whatever, guess what? You might feel uncomfortable hanging around around fit people, but you got to do it until you get yourself out of that mindset, right? You might be more comfortable hanging out with other individuals who identify themselves as fat, but you know what? You got to break that identity, cut those people out, surround yourself with good people. Just like how if you're like, eh, I'm a sitter, eh, I'm not the best Muslim, eh, I'm haram, eh, I'm too bad. Don't let shaitan lie to you like that, okay? Surround yourself with good believers and say, look, you know what? I'm not perfect, but I'm a Muslim. I'm going to have a past, but I'm a Muslim. And I'm going to follow Islam the best I can. I'm surrounding myself with good Muslims. Instead of going to the club on Friday night, I'm going to the masjid, right? Surround yourself with people who make you successful in the domains you want to be successful. And guess what? We all want to be successful across our deen, across our health and fitness, across our family, and across our finances and our careers. So guess what? Surround yourself with people who are successful across all those domains and watch how your life changes. So that's why environment's important because environment is going to shape your mindset by the mindsets of the people around you. Your mindset is going to shape your habits. Your habits are going to shape your results, which is going to reinforce the identity. The identity is going to attract more people like that into your environment, which is going to further re-enhance your mindset, which is going to build those habits even further. So it becomes a positive feedback loop, which is exactly what I want you to do after watching this, right? And surround yourself with me. Like if you're in my coaching program, boom, you're automatically surrounded with me. You know, that's going to increase your E-man. It's going to increase, you know, and you're going to be around other brothers who are crushing in the program. You're going to be around other sisters who are crushing in the program. We have a separate group for female, a separate group for male, obviously, for Islamic reasons. Um, you know, we've got my coaches of the groups who are both fit, healthy, knowledgeable. We've got all my other clients who are crushing it. People are at different points of the journey. Guess what? Your whole life's going to change. Your whole everything's going to change. Versus if you surround yourself with fat people and lazy people and sinners and people who neglect their family, guess what? That's going to affect your mindset too. And it's going to have you give you poor habits. You're going to become the person who eats unhealthy food, who skips your prayers, who commits sins, who's lazy at work, who's not successful, who's stuck and who, you know, goes and neglects their family and works late or goes, goes like to the bar after work, stuff for a lot, right? Don't become that person because then that just reinforces your identity that you're a loser and a sinner and all that stuff. And look, if you're watching right now, if you're watching this right now and you fall into any of those categories, like I'm not here to like beat you down. I'm just here to inspire you to change. And number one, you're watching my stuff. So that automatically gives you, you know, a degree of change in your environment because guess what? Me being in your environment where we watch me on Instagram or YouTube or whatever every single day is already shaping your mindset. Like you probably already noticed from watching my stuff that it's already shifted your mindset a little bit, which has shifted your habits. And maybe you've just applied a couple things. Maybe you just started praying the hajjid. Maybe you just started staying up after fudger, being more productive. Maybe you just started going to the gym here and there. Maybe you started just eating, you know, healthier, trying out some of my recipes. Maybe you just started, you know, being more focused in your prayers just from watching my stuff, being more health conscious, having more taqwa, food taqwa for the food and macros you put in your body, taqwa of your actions. <laughs> everything you're doing, fuck whatever your movement, moving your body properly in the gym so you don't hurt yourself. Maybe you just start applying some of these little things, but you've already noticed the difference because why? Because you have me in your environment. So imagine, you know, surrounding yourself with more successful people. Guess how that's going to change your environment. Imagine being a part of the program and actually having this every single day, being immersed in all of this to ensure that this is who you become. That's what I want for every single Muslim. That's why I'm adamant about not just spreading like my following to introduce people to this free content and dawah, but to actually work with clients and have people come into our program, you know, whether you have to save up money to make it happen or whether you're able to afford it right now, I want everybody to be able to experience our program because what we're building is amazing when you see our group, inshallah. So inshallah, may Allah help me to reach more of you guys, both through free content and through people who are able to afford the program. And even with some of our free resources and all that stuff for people who can't afford it yet, inshallah, may Allah help us all to become better Muslims and to have a strong, fit, healthy, you know, spiritually conscious, health conscious, everything conscious, successful ummah. I mean, all right. So with that, my nose has fully clogged. I got very passionate on this video. <laughs> I tried my best to prevent my nose from getting too clogged, but you know what? I just had to do this video. I didn't want to wait till I, you know, was fully recovered from my sickness because this video is super important. And I just truly believe that I've been really like, you know, phobic at the mouth. Like I've wanted to do this video since last week and I'll the I just had to do it today. So I hope you got a lot of benefit from this. I'm going to do a series on this inshallah. Um, you know, I mentioned ex-athletes, business owners, all that stuff uh, a little bit throughout this presentation, but I want to do a specific video for like ex-athletes who are either working corporate or you know, in startups, because that is a very large demographic we serve who we get great results for. I want to do a similar video for like what to do if you're a doctor, right? And these videos will be similar, but there'll be some differences in the schedule, right? Like doctors, some of these guys work on call all night, unhealthy food at the hospital, all this other stuff. So you know what? And then some doctors, they get a lot of steps in, other doctors are sitting all day, right? So doctor will be an interesting one. What to do as a business owner, etc. for all the different types of clients who we have direct experience with working with dozens and hundreds of people who fall into these different demographics. Now, 
We also have a little bit of experience working with college students, but again, most college students are in a position where they have a little bit more time and a little bit less money than somebody who like works. So typically, unless you have money or you work as well on top of being in college, it does make more sense to just use our free resources. So that's why we only have a handful of college students who we've worked with, uh, who either, you know, again, they work or they had support from parents. Um, but if you're a college student who works, uh, when I come out with the entrepreneur video, inshallah, that'll actually be very helpful for you, right? Because most of the same principles that apply to entrepreneurs apply to college students who work. So if you're a college student, you're watching this, keep it out for that video because it's going to be very applicable to you and help you a lot. But I hope this one was too, right? But like different principles like deep work, appointments, how to sequence your day for optimal productivity and focus, uh, and how to factor fitness and nutrition into that as well. All of the entrepreneur stuff is going to apply to you as well as a college student, whether you work or not, but especially if you work as a college student and obviously the entrepreneur stuff, right? And I've got a lot of other content already for entrepreneurs and a little bit for doctors. So inshallah, I'm going to have some of these specific videos coming out. Um, but yeah, you know, whether this video was directly applicable to you as a nine to five or a corporate startup, whatever it may be, or whether even as an entrepreneur, a doctor or a college student, you still got a lot of value from this and learned a lot from this. Cause I mean, especially the bill prep part, like that's a game changer that applies to everybody, right? Um, I hope you got value. So share this with others inshallah. And, um, if you have any direct questions or you need more help, just DM me on Instagram at the modern Muslim man, or you can comment below this video. Uh, and obviously if you want to work with the coach, uh, we won't do any like giant launches till January. Uh, but right now we still have the capacity to bring on five new clients per week. And then I'm also currently hiring and training up the next round of coaches to help us handle 20 new clients a week, inshallah, uh, in January when we get the new year's rush. So either way, the point of me sharing that with you right now is we have a little bit of a casual open enrollment open till January. So if you want to jump in right now, the link is in my bio, uh, all that stuff to apply for the program or just shoot me a message. If you have more questions, if you want me to shoot you more info, uh, and then actually the prices are going up in January. So I will do like a little mini launch in December where I'm just like, Hey, you know what? We're doing a lunch for January. Prices are going up. We're adding a lot of new features to the program. If you want to get our old pricing for the new features and still get access to all the new features, all the new coaches, all that stuff, jump in now. And those new features, we're actually already rolling them out right now, but we haven't raised our prices yet. So even if you hop in right now in November or December, you're still going to get access to all that. Um, so again, we have casual open enrollment, you know, five new clients a week. We have five new spots a week till January. So jump in before prices go up in the new year, inshallah. If you're watching this in the new year, no worries. You know, all the new features are worth it and the price increase isn't that much. So, you know, it's still, it's still great, but you know, the prices are going up, uh, especially on the six month program. Like the six month is a crazy good deal right now compared to uh, how much it's increasing. The 90 day program is only going up by like, uh, I'm trying to do the math, like 10, 20%, but the six month is going up by, by a lot more than that. So definitely jump in now if you can, inshallah, lock in that old pricing. And uh, again, um, even if right now you have more time than money, so it make and money's tight before it makes more sense to just go through my free stuff. I hope this free resource was super valuable for you, inshallah. Um, so again, if you have questions, let me know, send me a DM, uh, comment down below, share this with your friends, save this for later. If you want to review it again, especially if you're somebody who wants to really like review it deeply to learn this stuff. And again, let us know if you have questions, inshallah. All right, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, anything you need, please let me know. And inshallah, may Allah help this video reach lots of people. Bismillah. Should have said Bismillah at the beginning, but I'll just say Alhamdulillah. <laughs> it's actually a great Tuah. Bismik Allahumma Mutuah, yeah, right? Um, you know, Bismillah for the beginning and the end. Uh, so I hope that this video was helpful and may Allah help this video reach and help a lot more people. I hope that you can help me as well and that you get Barakah by sharing this video with others. And inshallah, we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.